All right, so this is uh, the TSAC meeting for Friday, October 20th, 2023. Um, we'll start with attendance. Uh, we'll start over there. Danny Palacios present. Ree Barco here. John Nelson here. William Coach present. Michael Warner present. Alejandro Casillas here. Hey, I'm here. Online. Gabe Trujillo present. Matthew Rothman present. Um, and I'll just read our mission statement is to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. And if everybody's had a chance to look at the agenda, um, motion to approve it. Um, all is approved. Okay. Aye. All right. Um, so then we'll go to our committee updates, uh, Board of Trustees. I have no updates. You have no updates? <laughs> no updates. All right. Say cab with Christian and Gabe. Do you have any updates for your say cab, Gabe? Well, we'll move on and come back to him then. Um, Judiciary Committee, agree? I would like to say that I am working, I've been working with um, our sponsor, our advisors and on um, new language for the proposed um, accountability committee. And I am meeting with Elise um, from the Church of Justice on Monday about this too. And then we'll have ready for the agenda, something for all of you to look at next week, including I'm taking what we had, Elise has given me from the norms discussion and kind of encapsulating that for you to feed into too. All right. So I'm trying okay. to really organize this to get it in front of you so we can get going with it. And then also, if we can try and meet Monday about um, the QR code and the survey for the training event. Absolutely. That'd be great because I need to get that, um, yeah. everybody to get word back to me so we can at least do that. In so if you can meet me on Monday over the weekend, just let I'll me know. I'll be here on Monday. I can be here by noon. Yeah, okay. that works. Perfect. All right. Mike. Mike. Oh, Mike. Um, so you said next week, right? We should have something about next week. Next week. I'm being with Lisa. I'm going to try to get it into the agenda. And what is my deadline to get the information to you guys to feed into? I'll get the live document to you. So what I'm thinking is, Friday. so ideally, um, mm -hmm. if you want to vote this in next Friday, that's yeah. fine too. If you want to give us a little more time, maybe that following week, hey, give this a look look through, yeah. give some suggestions, okay. and then the following week, we actually kind of vote on it. Okay, that sounds good. Does that yeah. sound right with everyone? Yeah, yeah, I'll try to have it ready for the agenda for next week, and then we can talk about it in next week's meeting in my, sec in my announcements, if you want to have a discussion, and then we'll vote on it the following week. I think that's a great idea rather than two close together. Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but he has some <coughs> dates. Yeah, so yesterday um, the budget committee met with Chris Harder, who is a senior physical operations manager. Um, he basically just helped us understand like the whole situation with budget uh, increase and everything. He basically explained that the budget was passed by the Board of Trustees, and when they passed this budget, um, they projected a 2% 2, 2 decrease in the budget funds. Um, of course, they ended up finding out that that was incorrect, and they ended up having a 6% increase. And then um, since the budget was already passed, they can't technically change it. So what the CFO of um, the budget... Uh, CFO Jim Carpenter. Is yeah. Going to do. Oh, yeah that's right. So the CFO Jim Carpenter is basically going to be meeting with the Board of Trustees in January to try and pass a new budget containing the increases. So we should be hopefully expecting a budget increase. Um, we uh, the budget committee is also going to be working on passing a new budget with these with these new numbers. And um, we're also working alongside Christopher Harder on creating a more strict um, procedure and guidelines for TSAC to like help uh, the council overall decide what we should spend funds on and what we shouldn't spend funds on. And if Mike wants to add anything to that. Yeah, I can, I can add on to it. Um, there's, so what the constitution and what we currently lack right now is a strict way of how we spend our funds. So what we're gonna look to do, and me and Alex have a recurring meeting on this, is to create a guideline list for this. What's gonna happen is it's gonna come as a constitutional amendment, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us strict guidelines on 
what we could spend, how we could spend it, and um, anything outside of it, it's no. With that, we're also going to revamp our student travel and student um, orgs presentation sheets. So what SACMIS used last week, we're going to revamp that system to make it a little more equitable and fair for, for more students. Um, with that, um, we want to motion to suspend that system for two weeks until we can actually get a hold of it. The reason we can motion it, it's not in our constitution currently. We also want to enshrine it in our constitution as well, the system. So to clarify, we want to, we want to Pause. Yes, funding. correct. So um, the way our works our funding calendar is. We wouldn't be able to do it unless like someone present like it sent us information now. Yeah. But what we're going to do is pause it for two weeks, gives me and Alex at least a two week deadline to remake the system, um, rewrite it and then we present it to y'all as well. And we look to enshrine our constitution that way as well. Three and then well. I just wanted to ask and reply, would you please, before you come back to us, when you come up with this, would you also uh, touch base with Dave? Yes, uh, okay. yes. We, we met with him earlier today. Um, awesome. He gave us some good advice. Yeah. Our goal is to like pass it through him, make sure it isn't interfering with his operations, pass it through our advisors, nice. get some input from the rest of the council on this, and then really make it a, a, a good system. Great. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Brown? Hi, um, hi all. I'm online today, but I just wanted to um, just add and say thank you to to Alex or Alejandro and uh, oh my God and Mike for uh, joining us yesterday for that meeting. But I did want to make one correction on the budget, um, the new budget that we're looking at for the increase. Last year, the budgets were allocated. He he was right when he said it was two percent down, and that's what the current numbers are that were loaded loaded in the budget and that's why there was like discrepancy there but then um we're actually four percent off so so that's where that six percent discrepancy from two percent down and four percent up so i just want to clarify um that that's what that six percent is and so there should be a budget increase we're pretty confident that's happening but um, just in terms of timeline, that's not probably going to be reflected in the budget until spring, like probably January or later than that. So I just wanted to just clarify a couple of things there. Yeah, and I'll add on, um, we did the math. It's a nine grand, or no, yeah, it's a nine grand increase from what we originally, so we cut, the, from the budget cuts we did a few weeks ago, it's a nine grand increase. So most likely what we're gonna try to do is just have it have like the uh, donations to the food pantry eat that blow essentially. So the 10 grand that's gonna be spent most immediately, that would do that nine grand increase would just grab that and like equal that out. So no no changes should happen. If anything, we should see like an increase in some areas. So um, the way the budget is presented right now, that's your guys' operating budget. Um, go through it as it will. If you have questions as well, please come to us. So in this period of uh, shared governance, is there any work on something that you guys can keep us updated while you work on this these guidelines? Yes, our goal is to like ideally like give us a few, we have a long list of things to do at the moment. Right. Um, right. but our goal is to get the guidelines out quickly and for collaboration. We're gonna give oh. you guys a document to collaborate on. We're not gonna like we're gonna work together and do this and then give you all the documents. Awesome. Um instead of like flooding the meeting with like a lot of we know we need to do and we'll just give it to you at that point. Oh, I, I mean, no, there is Gates, some, Gates has something in the comment, but it's related to his oh. uh, to update, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll also have a comment on the current topic. I have a question in regards to this uh, like, uh, withholding funds for two weeks. Um, and my concerns are relating to the food pantry. Uh, and that first initial donation. Uh, Those are two other things you're talking about. Withholding funds is just for our, our our travel and events program. That's where I want to put a pause on right now. Okay. Yeah, just uh, y'all can still use y'all's budgets. Okay. The, we're just going to redo that system, so we're still able to go. Yeah, with that. 
that yeah, this is for the student. This is for the student work allocation process. Okay, I'll get to rewrite that. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. right? So, any other questions before we make this motion? Okay, um, with that, a motion to suspend for two weeks the student work allocation process. Um, yeah, for two weeks. I I'll second, second it. Yes. Okay, so, so vote. All eyes. Aye. Aye. Sounded unanimous. All right. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, and then, Dave, since you got disconnected, that's why we moved on really quick. But we'll go back to you at St. Albert Gates. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Um. So just real quick. So I just have three major updates from State Cab. One, we have our CCD members finally. Um, Milo and Michael from CCD's student government are our State Cab reps for, for them. Um, so now we have a full board, which is great, you know. Uh, secondly, uh, Kristen is now the vice chair of SACAB. Um, so that's huge. Um, yeah, and then the last update that I have, so SACAB on Tuesday are doing a last meeting. We passed a bill um, that asked ABOD, yeah, that asked ABOD, so the area board of directors, to, um, to to consider giving fake cap and say cap vo voting power on the board, along with executive session attendance. And while we know that this has to go to like Colorado, the Colorado le legislative level, this is kind of like the first initial step in getting um, in starting that process and kind of getting, you know, like uh, feedback and getting support for it. So then once we do take it to the legislative level, then uh, we have like like this uh, background and efforts that we've done to to get it to that, yeah. Hey, good job. Good job. Yeah. Right. So for PR committee updates, nothing much different. We're planning on starting the Kroger PR campaign next week, um, and working on our timely events. I did put a link in the chat yesterday with some times in November for tabling. Um, if all council members could fill that out. I have a question. Um, it's a kind of request, actually. Um, right now, it really feels like only Matt and I are on the PR committee and Gabe as well. Um, we would like to invite another councilor maybe to join us because um, PR committee, especially when this budget kind of thing situated, we're going to be kind of moving a lot in this. Um, my capacity is kind of the graphic designer is um, as where I can kind of feel a lot of this and also kind of do events as well. Uh, we'd like to ask and see like maybe if like John, would you like to join us on the PR committee? See if you can kind of help us out with some events and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll add you to the chat later. Yeah. We have we have we have recurring meeting to kind of help us. I know I know you're really in touch with students. So I'm going. and having you at events and stuff. We Absolutely. don't need a speaker. Yeah, yeah. Like so, an electronic speaker. So this is just a thought as well. So <laughs> Um, and other than that, I don't really have anything else. We're just working on those two initiatives because they're main goals right now. Oh, actually, one more. Um, I'm going to be working with Armando. Um, we're probably going to give up the ESAC uh, Squarespace website and move it to the university's one. And I'm working with Armando to make that a smooth process where we can get updates more quickly as we need and make sure we're taking what is working on a on the Squarespace website and moving into the university website. Um and then system vote committee and Naomi. So we met this morning with Jesse and Gabe was there with me as well. It was really nice. Um we kind of were just like I was panicking on getting a structure set up for how we're going to approach this uh, ant flow kind of project. And it was really helpful. She gave me a structure for a couple of different ways to set up proposals. Um I reached out to the LGBTQIA plus center to see if we can come around some good data points around what would make non-binary and trans folks feel included and gender affirmed whenever trying to get these free products for their menstrual cycle that you shouldn't have to feel like a woman just because you experience them or you feel even more like a woman than you experience them vice versa whatever makes them feel most comfortable um and although i miss you denver um the majority of the people here tend to be welcoming and inclusive we do have 
people we don't know and we don't know what happens on behind closed doors. So um, I think that we just want to make sure that we're getting the right background information and data to better support our students um, whenever it comes to getting these projects um, taken care of. So we have that discussion, we put it in motion, and hopefully we will have more to our structure come next week. Yeah. Well, just a quick question. Uh, uh, was, was it, who, who met the guests this morning? Gabe and I. Oh, just you and Gabe? Yeah, just you and Gabe. Uh, Gabe and I. Uh, uh, Paul must have just because he's sick with COVID. So he's sick. And then I would also like to set up a meeting with you at some point to discuss that grant opportunity again. Yes. Um, and the, oh, yes. Yeah, she also did mention another uh, bill, and also the health center apparently gets. Free funding from the state for products. So we're thinking about potentially combining budgets instead of just asking for more money. Um, so maybe that will also present something more reoccurring for the university as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you want to bring up the important sleeping stuff, yes. I don't think it'll be able to happen this year, but I think we can set some groundwork to get it really big and go to next year. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, open floor announcements. Uh, real quick, uh, some concerns have been brought up to me by uh, Black Era, and uh, they have to do with uh, your bill as well. Which, no. yeah, no just making sure the council knows. And um, they do have an event coming up soon, and I do encourage counselors to definitely stop by. It's on the 27th. And yeah, it'd be a good time to meet other students. And spend that quality time with them. Yeah. Right. That's um, it. That's all I got. I just have a direct comment really quick. Um, can you throw that in the chat? I will. All right. We have Will and or Mike and then you Sorry, perfect. Um, so this is just something that like I think affects all of us. Um, and I will work on writing this bill next week. We have we have found that there's a lot of holes in our constitution. It's a year old. She's new. She's like a new party. You know, we're working on patching her in as we go. So what we're pro I'm probably gonna do is um, write a bill to form a not accountability is not the word I'm looking for, but like a a, a redraft committee. We're not gonna redraft it, but we're gonna add it and so we're gonna patch in some holes. And ideally, what this committee is gonna do is identify the issues we need to fix. So like budget today, I identified like five. That we're going to patch up within the month. But um, I think ideally this committee should be made up of a chair from here and then a few students from around campus. So, like, I know James or Argus are the, the drafter of the original constitution. I think he'd love to be a part of this and help us kind of really just cement um, some of these loopholes and make sure that like, it's a full functioning document. And like next year going into this, we're going to have a crisis about a bunch of different things. So, uh, I'm going to work on this next week, um, bring it to y'all. But um, just putting that on y'all's radar, um, that's going to be coming up soon um, from my end at least. I have a question to that as well. Are you trying to make a, a resolution to where it's standing each year? A committee for this? Yeah. Ideally, no. Um, what I'm going to, well, I don't know. What it's, so uh, right at the moment, it's probably going to be just a task force or an ad hoc committee. Uh, if the need is every year, then it can be reestablished. All uh, right. And we did have a government documents made, it just didn't meet last year. All right. Uh, it, it now we're grounded on that. So I think a better chair would be better. Just quickly to say, because we're going to be reworking part of the Constitution about judicial, mm -hmm. I'd like to part of that too, because I had planned in talking with our yeah, advisors absolutely. to work with James on that part to change it. So yeah, because like my two most immediate concerns is accountability, judicial process, and budget process. Get yeah. those cemented and concrete and like bulletproof. And then we could kind of work on like PR next and then like sustainability and other funds sort of thing. And the elections piece. And the elections piece. That's a great one too. I will. Uh, just a clar clarifying question. Sure. Is that the, okay. okay. Um, regard, in regards to this committee, uh, are you going to present these new solutions or, you know, amendments to the student population by any chance? Or? Well, ideally, what, how it's going to be is. This, this committee doesn't they identify the issues mm -hmm. so like if we're inviting members of the student population then like that's kind of like they're they're looking at it and say this could be fixed this could be fixed but they're not good they're not going to be tasked with fixing it 
budget committee. Here's your, here's here's the issues you all need to fix. We'll draft a solution and bring it back to the community. They like it, then we'll get it voted on by the council at the end. So it's not supposed to be an easy process. It's going to take a while. Yes, I just wanted to make sure. Never mind. Uh, Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Any fundamental changes have to go through the students, but any like procedural changes, we it's our our task. Anything that's going to affect getting the result? Also, so it's not clear. With that, Mike, um, are you thinking about doing that as a resolution or just as a motion to create like a task force? Uh, resolution. I'd rather have the task force be structured. So, all right. Yeah. So that sounds great. Good idea. And I believe it's almost one o'clock. So, so if we can yeah, it'll pause be. so we can get yeah. Dr. Baker in. Uh, this will take literally one okay. day. Um, I need to express, like, express this to y'all. I'm tired. I'm so, 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 so tired. Okay. I keep hearing from multiple places around campus, and it's me. I'm the safe spaces they feel comfortable coming to and telling us how we are screwing up and harassing our students and not advocating for them and making them feel like they can't come to us. That's not okay. I keep hearing these things and they're coming to me to tell me this, not TSAC to me. And that's not a lot that I can continue to take on anymore. And I feel fucking guilty because it's not my sole responsibility to have to do this, but I feel bad when they can't fucking go to anybody else and get any stuff. That's not okay. So I don't know what to do, but I would encourage you guys to get out and know your students, know your people, let them know who you are, let them know that you're a safe space to go to, that you're not going to harass them, that you're not going to come and make them feel like where they're at isn't safe, and just let them know that they have someone there for them. Our students are going through a really bad time right now because midterms are coming up. Y'all can see the sidewalks. They're putting You Matter and Self Care is Love. Like, we all know that the health center puts that up around this time because we are going through some serious suicidal thoughts right now. Is this college education worth it? Can we handle this? Is college really for me? Like, every student has thought about that at least once or twice in their half of the semester that they've been here. And that's just facts. So, we should not be out here harassing our students, making them feel like they don't belong somewhere, and nonetheless not advocating for them as our need states. So when you get the opportunity to go and be a part of something, you should take that and go do it. And I know that like that sounds somewhat hypocritical, but I'm very involved in the community where I can help the most, which is the STEM department. And you can ask just about anybody there. I really do my best to spread myself as far as I can across that area because I know that I can help them with the resources that I have. So please try to make these students feel more safe and cared for and advocated for because I can't do this on my own anymore. It's literally so great. Easy to do. It is 101. Uh, so it's uh, public comment, and we have, I know we have Dr. Baker here for public comment. Um, were you also for public comment? Okay. I guess Dr. Baker, you have the floor. Okay, so I got a hand up for everybody. Um, you can pass that around. Right here. Right here. I'm sorry for the last thing. I just want to introduce myself and tell you why, why I'm here. Um, I'm Biff Baker. I've been at Metro seven years. Uh, I teach mostly introduction to business, but I also teach project management. So I bet, literally I've taught almost every single course in the college of business, accounting, finance, economics, that kind of thing. Um, but I volunteered to be on the Senate three years ago. So I've been on the faculty Senate three and a half years, I think now. And uh, part of being on faculty senate, you're, you're required actually to be on at least one committee. I'm on like three. Uh, this is one of my three, and it's called Student Affairs Committee. And it, just the name sounded intriguing. I really didn't know much, if anything, about it, but I had to sort of dig for this. And that's why I'm sharing it with you. So, uh, Student Affairs Committee, of which I am now the chair, because uh, nobody else wanted to do it. And I'm being, being honest with you guys, okay? Uh, SAC will make recommendations to the Senate concerning all problems relating to student welfare, including but not limited to student union, <laughs> club activities, student rights, responsibility, student activities, allocation, student funds. It also says sole authority to appoint faculty representative to the Student Affairs Board, which recommends college administration fee monies. And committee shall appoint these representatives as defined by the bylaws, blah, blah, blah. You get down to the membership. It's basically six members. It's, you know, you got College of Business, College of Hospitality, et cetera. So it's like one member from each. Okay. And then the last portion of it 
you guys can have one representative appointed to us, Student Affairs Committee from TSAC, to hear questions, concerns, opportunities, and collaborate. So talking to people who used to be on it, and, and here, here's the problem with the, the Senate committees, is that you're usually on a two-year uh, Senate appointment, and you're usually on a one-year committee appointment. So everybody that was on this before me is gone, and some of them are actually literally retired and stuff like that. So not a lot of continuity. I'm sure you guys experience that on an annual basis as well. My understanding of this, me probing everybody, is basically we're just supposed to be a liaison to you. You guys got something that you want the Senate to hear? You let me know. I got something I want you know, TSAC to hear? I'll let you know. That's about it. But we can act as your advocates among the faculty Senate. Because let's face it, I mean, you know, you guys are, are the hub where all the students, you know, talk to you. Sometimes they don't talk to me. And I'm the hub where all the faculty talks to me and sometimes they don't talk to you. And, and so um, I designated myself, again, due to a lack of uh, volunteers <laughs> to be that la very last line. It says a committee representative will meet with TSEC at least once a semester with staff members from the Division of Student Affairs. Their quest concerns opportunities to collaborate from that group. So rather than me showing up every single week at your meetings, because I don't think that's productive either, I live in Springs. So coming here today involved an hour and a half drive. will involve an hour and a half to two hours drive back and a half hour walk, okay, each way. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I started here at 1230 today, so I got here by one o'clock. Um, and this is a perpetual problem I have, but former military disabled, that kind of thing. Um, but I just want you to know, love you guys. I'm here for you guys. If you need me, I'll come. If you don't need me, I won't come. Uh, if we can collaborate, we'll collaborate. If you don't want to collaborate, that's fine with me too. You have a hand up first. Here. So, um, so you know, one, two, three. Two things. Um, for future reference, we do have- I'm 50% hearing. So I know you're totally good. We do have an online option. So in the future, that might be uh, beneficial to you as well. I do say, say thank you for being you. My roommate, Blair Witted. Oh, he's loves, Blair's roommate. Loves you. Like, Blair's one of my you, favorite students. You are his favorite for, for professors. So thank you. Thank you for like inspiring him to go do his thing because he speaks Thanks. widely about you. And I'm, I'm angry that I took a prerequisite out of college to not be an intro to business with you. So, Darn. But next, guys take the next, next life, next life, of course. <laughs> but, um, I appreciate that. Um, appreciate the support. We'd love to have you on some, some things, but um, online is very easy as well. We try to make it accessible. Very so. cool. Very cool. I'll do that. And, and thank you so much for the feedback. That's, that's heartening. I appreciate yeah. you. And you had your hand up second and then third. Yeah, so I don't even know how to phrase this question. How can we help our faculty and our students advocate in a way that will actually get something done versus you guys just hearing the problem and then doing nothing about it? Because we've had stuff like that happen with the faculty when it came to the work overload and they weren't hurt. They're, they had some stuff be put to the table and then what they said was going to be done to help them ended up just kind of slap stabbing them in the back and that wasn't cool so what's the point of us advocating for our faculty and our students when if it doesn't go to us and we you know give a little money here and there like, what's the point how are we gonna how can we have effect systematically is what i want to know because that's what matters that's where change happens yeah again speeches on work overload and that kind of thing because the less classes we teach the more we can be advisors to students the more we can get involved in student activities and stuff like that well the the senate was doing things that was not productive i'll leave it at that um and it did not come to fruition either for your goals my goals or anybody else's goals so we're stuck in this big bureaucracy and the senate members including myself are trying to figure it out so you're saying actively speaking there is no how there is just no we can do nothing basically for faculty workload for faculty, no it's not just faculty workload i'm talking about systematic change in general and i'm totally focused on systemic change and systematic change you know my dissertation was on that okay and and so i always try to look for uh, systematic solutions and part of the reason i'm on this committee is actually i was supposed to rotate off the senate and i found out nobody would take this and, and i care enough about it where i'm on senate another two years i'm not really actually supposed to be right um you know so so i think there's a handful of us that step up just like you step up yeah you know, to take the reins and try to make something positive occur. And, and so until item by item, we do have something systematic, nothing's gonna happen. So, so there is no how right now. Like that, so that was my question, is there's no how. In, right in the Senate, the how is Robert's rule of order. Oh, sure. And, and so, so I will tell you, 
give you an example. Hopefully this is applicable. Um, they're talking about doing, you know, an hour of uh, community time yeah. in the middle of the day. So I usually, I'm usually here at six in the morning. I got to leave Colorado Springs basically 4.30 in the morning because of traffic. And I'm here at six in the morning. I grade and I start teaching at eight in the morning. So I'll teach at eight. I'll teach at 9.30. I'll teach at 11, 11 o'clock. And then we have that community hour. Okay. And then everything I teach in the afternoon, which I also teach in the afternoon, gets shifted to the right 45 minutes. Right. Here's one of the problems. That initiative originally came out of Will Simpkins' office, and the initiative was not floated among the deans. So the deans didn't float it among the chairs, and the chairs did not float it among the professors. Mm -hmm. That was a faux pas at point of origin. Right. And I know it was discussed at least one time here based on TSAC liaison to the SAC last year. I know it was at least discussed once. Yeah. Well, that we could have all the systems in place, which means initiatives like that are supposed to be looked at by the dean, supposed to be looked at by chairs, are supposed to be voted upon, not only by the Senate, but the writ large academia, right? The faculty and staff. It wasn't. So even if we have a system in place, sometimes they don't follow the system. So it sounds like this went to Will Simpkins department we'll call it that because we don't want to blame it on solely and then they just said yeah sounds like a great idea without consulting who it actually affects yeah and then they sold it to the hires without selling it to the lowers and i'm one of the lowers i'm not even tenured okay yeah. so I'm, I'm doing a lot of committees i'm not even tenured right so believe me i mean i go from nine month contract to nine month contract so i'm i'm, right. I'm, I'm not part of the hierarchy okay right. exactly. but yeah you're, you're exactly right and can we go well, you had your hand up or is that the same topic I'll, I'll go ahead, please. Wait. The resolution coming off to. Yeah, I'm 50 percent hearing. I apologize. Um, I have a resolution here. coming off today about the community hour because I think you're right. There was no student input and that. Um, and no professor. No input. professor input. IETA for Dr. Lucy. OK, which good. Which is very much good, involved. Good. Yeah, in, yeah. And all of that. Um, so. I wanted input and I actually emailed Dr. Gutnick and she good. thinks it's a good idea if we can get faculty and students involved into survey. Um, I also emailed uh, someone from the, the data office who does the surveys and it was told that maybe a survey is not the best idea, um, that maybe a town poll would be better. Uh, I'm still going to do the resolution today because I think it's important for us to be connected to like to, to connect it to our faculty members and to hear from like students first. So you give me the survey link. This is a, a yes. great initiative. You give me the survey link. I got a member from every single one of the colleges on the SAC. You send it to me, I send it to them, and then their initiative is sending it to the rest of the faculty in their particular college. So I, I know everybody in the college business. I mean, like everybody. Yeah, I'm the social butterfly, if you will. Okay, I'm the guy that brings donuts on Friday. Okay, you know, <laughs> so everybody likes this. Yeah. You, you send it to me, I'll send it to my whole college. Yeah, and that's how we do it. I think a town hall, all too often, as you're probably familiar with, we do town hall meetings, and one percent of the student body shows up. Maybe. I do want to. I I appreciate it. I do want to uh, sort of. Uh, motivate my fellow council members to, uh, to work with their uh, their department heads and then mm -hmm. with department chairs. So I would like them uh, to send it to their department chairs and then whoever, or like the, their remainder would be divided amongst us. That's how it's placed in the resolution. Um, that's, that's, that's fine. I'll, I'll tell my members, send it to their department chairs. So awesome. that's, that's actually how we do in the College of Business. I'll send it to the six chairs. Yeah. Six chairs will send it to the, I don't know, 50 professors or whatever it is. Okay. Which, which is fine. I love it. Love it. Virtual bump. Because <laughs> I can't get up too good. <laughs> yes. I have for forgetting a survey to me. I can send that to the chair of the biology department, and I can probably get the chair of the GIS department or atmospheric science department, whatever, to also send that out to the professors and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty cool or whatever. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Just informally, one of the biggest concerns on the professors was. How's this impact um, both on professors and on students? And if you move it right, either 45 minutes or an hour, I mean, I teach till five o'clock. Now I'm teaching till 545. Right. Right. And students that have to run off to, to, to work, 
might have jobs starting at six o'clock. Now all of a sudden, jobs going to start at six forty-five. I mean, it's it's just a domino effect. So, so. is this um, going to be like is this set in place? Like this is going to happen for sure, or do we have time to advocate for them to like slow their roll and pick something better? I brought it up at Senate. They say it's sort of kind of approved, awaiting input. So I think this may may shift with Janine, you know, president of the university decides it's on her desk. Right. So we got to do it sooner instead of later. Yes. Okay. Yes. It, and this is a perfect example of where we can collaborate. Okay. Very nice. Still got a question? Yes, actually. You had your hand up previously. Um, first off, thank you for your service. Uh, thank you, sir. I'd like to potentially also volunteer for this uh, position that's being offered or that is on the table. Um, I do have a, a few comments. I know there was a news article somewhere that I read that stated that this community hour thing is they're taking a pause. I don't know if yeah. it's sitting they're on her desk awaiting signature. Yeah. Right. And before they sign it and you know try to get that input. Uh, my other comment was I see that you cover student or club activities. Um, so can we potentially work on something to improve that for them? Is that yeah, I guess I mean what a part of the initiative might be. Okay. Whatever you guys bring up that's requires professor collaboration, I'll introduce it in the Senate. Sometimes it takes me two weeks, sometimes four weeks to get on the floor. But that's how the Senate works. I mean that's just an open yeah. for us. And look again, thank you for coming. When it comes time, um, when we get to letter H, when it comes to this faculty of staff and Senate, I think you were the missing piece that would have helped me perform what I was supposed to be doing. Are you John Denny? John Nelson. Oh, John Nelson? Yes. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Mm -hmm. Usually shake with that hand. Mm -hmm. Always. Okay. okay. So I'm glad you came here. So that's why I was just listening. So if you guys want to write it down, I'm B Baker 40. MSUDenver.edu. So B Baker 40. So B Baker 40. Yeah. That's Biff Baker. Yeah, B Baker. Or are you type in Canvas Biff? And I'm the only one that pops up, lo and behold. I know you from last year because I was the first senior representative. So nice to see you again. Love to see you too. I didn't want to do Senate again, but I thought this was important. Thank you. So, yes. Yeah, and then we have Kate. So, his hand up just after this. Yeah, would you do oh, there's people up there. Awesome. Yeah, hello. Awesome. Um, yeah, so so, so that's actually what I wanted to ask or like Remember. or remember or, or tell the whole like, like the rest of the council, um, which was from like what I remember, right? John was selected to be on this on this committee that that was just, you know, uh, start, started up again. So from what I remember, John is like the representative that we have designated for this specific uh, faculty senate committee, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Awesome. I uh, I was not made. I forgot about that. So yeah. That's well. Doesn't hold anything. I guess point of clarification. So that's the faculty senate. The position in this is for the. Yeah. Student Affairs what we're called the Senate Student Affairs Committee. Okay. So there are two positions in the Faculty and Staff Senate. Uh, one is mine, which is the Academic Policy. I sit on the Academic Policy Senate, and then John could sit on the Student Affairs Senate. So it was previously one person for my understanding. It was divided these two different meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they split it simply because right. we don't do academic affairs. We, right. We're looking at everything else. So very good. So then, kind of two of the pieces I have. I just wanted to introduce me and Gabe, who's online. We're actually the representatives for the SAB. Sweet. Um, so we're trying to meet with them next week or potentially today. Um, and I also want to point out, it doesn't look like it was sent to you at all, but. Edward Brown, who I think sent this out on behalf of um, President Davidson, um, is actually looking at further assistance in the community hour, um, like searching into it. Yeah, if you send that to me, I'd yeah. appreciate it. 
That'd be great. So usually Liz talks to President Davidson and I talk to Liz. I mean, that's sort of how the structure is for the Senate. Liz, good. Okay. I don't think I see her email on here either. I can send it. I can send it. Well, I'm sending it right now. Oh. Very cool. All right. We good? Yes, we yeah. Thank you so much for coming tonight. And, and my committee only meets on an as required basis, but if you need me, I'll, I'll, I'll say yeah. whatever. Yeah, it'd probably be on there because this has been a hardest part of my day was getting here. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you so much. It's, it's, I got sweat rings, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. As you see, though, we're more than ready to set up to have virtual. Yeah, I, I watch your stuff actually every week and I appreciate you recording it. So I feel like I'm abreast of what you guys are doing. I'm so sorry. You, I'm so sorry. You no, no. That. <laughs> that's that's awesome because I, I came here and I didn't feel like an outsider. I felt like I already knew you guys. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's sort of weird having big brothers able to record everything nowadays. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gang. Is that true? I, I found that on the floor, so I'm leaving it there for whoever right. might need it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So any more open announcements? Thank you. Just want to make sure we're good on that before closing that out. Um, Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So faculty and staff Senate updates. Um, I think since we have our next guest, maybe we should okay. stand up for Hi. Oh, it's James and Lynn. There's James. Hi. I think you us. Hi. So we're going on to the pool and infrastructure discussion. Um, oh, yes, it is time for a minute. So, James is up there? Yes. Hi. So, James, you want to take the floor and introduce us to your pool discussion? Okay. Um, so, you, you can see the PowerPoint online right now? Yes, we can. Okay. Are you controlling it or am I? I am. So if okay. you, need to go, you need to go to the next slide, just tell me. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, my name is James Mejia. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer uh, for the university. Uh, the, the things that we do here in uh, with the strategy team include infrastructure, uh, but we also house the data team, so data-driven decision-making with regard to programs, retention, graduation rates, uh, employment after graduation, et cetera. All of that kind of information, all of the reporting uh, goes through our office. And then we also are the uh, 2030 strategy team, um, have that into place and, and have milestones leading up to, to 2030. Uh, in all the departments, uh, which will be a major topic uh, at the Board of Trustees retreat uh, coming up next week. Um, but with regard to infrastructure, um, we have organized them in a master uh, calendar, which you see in front of you right now, um, starting with 800 Kalamath Street, uh, all the way through the PE Event Center, which essentially is shorthand for the pool. Um, and I'm happy to talk about these in as much depth as you would like, or, or I'll do a very brief presentation and then answer questions. Um, but uh, 800 Kalamath is a uh, building uh, that houses the majority of our music programming for MSU Denver um, in the Santa Fe Historic Corridor. And uh, we had been leasing that building for several years. Now the foundation is purchasing and in process of purchasing that building uh, will close next month. Um, Sim Labs is currently under, under construction. It is the first phase of the Health Institute. And you'll see later in the page, the, the fifth point is the second phase of the Health Institute. And we have um, asked the state of Colorado for funding for both the C2 Hub and the Health Institute. So those are both in the, the hands of uh, the legislature with regard to our funding. Um, we are a partner with AHAC in faculty staff housing, and that will be um, uh, pursued 
uh, alongside the C2 hub. So it's a, approximately a year later, um, but those two buildings are on the same site, and I'll show a picture of that in a minute. And then, of course, student housing, we're still in process of planning that, and the pool, um, we're in process of planning that as well. For both of those projects, our plan is to put um, uh, what, what we would call massing drawings, just to show a picture of what it would look like on the proposed site. And then we have some uh, some fundraising to do, and uh, we've got to put together the financing for both of those projects. Um, so to be very clear about our infrastructure as a university, the, the pain point is our ability to pay back any funds that we borrow or have financed. Uh, and so when when we talk about planning, uh, that is the majority of that process is, is figuring out how we're going to pay for it and how we pay back uh, any sort of um, uh, funds that that we amass uh, and start building with. Um, so let me show you if you can go to the next slide, it'll show a, a picture of uh, the first project. So on the right, you see the um, the C2 hub building. That is an office building that will have uh, retail on the first floor. On well, the second floor will be C2 hub. Um, and if we can afford it, we'll do a deck like you see in the in the photo. That's an outdoor deck on the second floor. Um, AHEC will have new offices there. And Gary Community Ventures, which is a uh, 501c3, uh, will, will also have a floor of the building. Um, that will be condominiumized, meaning that we will pay for and own one floor of that building. And then just like an HOA in an apartment building, uh, we'll pay into a fund to help manage the building. Um, the building on the left is faculty staff housing. Uh, and while this is not an MSU project, we will have first right of refusal on several units in there uh, with the target being faculty and staff housing um, with uh, less than market rate housing um, for for lease. So those are uh, those are the two buildings proposed uh, on the old ball field site. So, so if we can go to the next one. Um, so again, that that shows a, a little bit drawn out, but that will have uh, early childhood education on the first floor of the faculty staff housing and then uh, some market rate um, and affordable housing in that building. And then again, another view of the uh, C2 hub building um, and other uses for that office building. But that's that's what that looks like uh, um, from a higher view with a little courtyard in the middle. You'll see the 5280 trail, which which goes through the city of Denver, uh, goes on one side of the building and then uh, pick up and drop off for early learning center is on the opposite side of the site. So that again, that is the old ball field site. So next one. Um, this is the concept for the Health Institute, obviously just uh, uh, our campus doesn't look like this. Our streets don't look like it, etc. But but just a uh, uh, an initial rendering of um, of Health Institute, which will be attached to the West classroom. And then I have one more slide. Uh, which is a very urban student housing. This is the middle of New York City. We will build nothing like this, but wanted to include this just to prompt the conversation. This actually has first floor retail classroom buildings and then housing up top. So we're contemplating what student housing uh, might look like um, and how many stores it, stories it would be, how big it would be, but certainly have, have every intention of uh, pursuing student housing um, uh, on the Auraria campus um, in the very near future and in, in planning for that. So that's the presentation. Happy to answer any and all questions. Well, can so I Mike, Denny, well, Naomi Reed. Yes. Hello, James. I um, uh, appreciate the presentation. Um, I remember you mentioning this at the board of trustees meeting, so it's really cool to kind of see the kind of con concepts for this. Um, quick question, and you and uh, I may have missed it, so please uh, tell me if I'm uh, if I did. 
the for this new building with the C2 hub and the AHEC offices and stuff like that. So two questions for that. Um, I remember them at the board of trustees mentioning that they were going to look for funding. And if they couldn't find funding, then they were going to try to like implement a student fee to pay for this building. Um, what what is the current work on that? Like, how is that looking like? It's going to shape up. Yeah. So our our first um, step is is uh, fundraising. So our our advancement office has already raised a couple million dollars. We're, we're uh, we think that they'll raise all the way up to ten million or um, sixty percent of the cost of the project just through fundraising. And we again, we've already had some some good success. We're probably one fifth of the way to uh, raising the funds there. Maybe maybe uh, uh, even more than that. Um, secondly, the other half of the project is, is being uh, requested of the state of Colorado. And we will know the outcome of that when the legislature convenes in January and issues their reports. Um, so I'm, I would say definitely by May, I would say closer to March, we should know whether or not we are funded for the C2 hub. Um, if we're not, uh, then it's a whole new conversation. Um, we, we are definitely not automatic that it would, that it would be student fees. Uh, there are a lot of lot of ways to finance a project, um, and we we've, we've got to figure out how we can do that. Can we raise more money? Uh, can we do bonds? Can we do certificates of, of participation? I mean, there there are a lot. Of, can we get industry partnerships and corporate sponsorships for the building? That kind of thing. There's a lot of ways to uh, to finance building. So certainly not a a done deal with regard to fees and. Uh, That'll be that'll be a long conversation. If we do not get the funding, uh, it'll be a, a a larger conversation, and you'll you'll certainly hear about it. Okay, cool, cool. I appreciate it. Um, and then the second, real quickly, um, this C two hub. This would be an MSU Denver building. We wouldn't be paying to AHEC rents or anything. This would be a building that is solely or our, a space that's solely ours, right? This building would be condominiumized. So. Um, we would own our own floor, but any common areas we would be paying into um, uh, what's called a CAM, a CAM, a common area maintenance fee. It's like an HOA in a in a, an apartment building, um, but in a condo building. So you would own your condo, but for things like maintaining the hallways and uh, the foyer or uh, the person who's at the door, like a like a door person, um, all those common areas, uh, the party room, et cetera, uh, those are paid for by all the tenants sharing in the cost. That's the same way that that office building would be run. So we would own our, we would pay for and own our own floor, but we'd have to pay into a common area maintenance fund in order to, uh, to manage the building. Um, so we'd manage, we, we would own our floor, but not own the whole building. Cool. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hi, James. Um, thank you for taking the time of being here with us. Um, so I know we're uh, just con maybe considering student fees for this. Um, will this, if use, I'm not saying we're going to use them, but if use, would that be the student fees would be to build? this and then we would also have to purchase the first floor or the fees are just for the first floor <laughs> and any any financing will be just for our floor okay so any awesome. and yeah so any financing that we assemble will be just for msu property um ahec has contracted with a private developer and the private developer right now is the only one that has expended any money in developing the project um, so really, they're the ones at risk uh, for funds right now. And until uh, we work out a contract with, uh, you know, a, a developer uh, contract, um, we need to put an exact number on what it would cost uh, and an exact layout as to what what our floor would look like. So we've we've got a ways to go. Um, but any financing that we come up with will be just for 
uh, our our floor, our ownership. Okay. Um, and my my second question. Oh, I, I actually have three. Um, so I, given that we're considering to do anything with student fees, um, I I would like to know why student housing wasn't prioritized uh, in in this. Um, so student fees has not been a part of our conversation. It's not been. I'm I'm in charge of the project. And I have not discussed student fees, um, so I'm I'm not sure where you guys are getting that. Um, uh, I think any if if we don't get funded by the state, um, all financing mechanisms I think are should be discussed, and what's the most efficient in in terms of of building the project. But as the person in charge of the project, I have not discussed student fees at all. Um, um, and uh, in, in terms of student housing, the reason faculty, staff housing and C2 Hub became the priority is because AHEC is developing the building whether or not we're a part of it. This was not an MSU initiative. They brought it to us and said, would you like to be a part of this project? So we and and they they we had the option of saying no, we don't want to be part of the project, or we had the option of saying yes, we'd like the C two hub to be a new space as opposed to uh, attempting to retrofit part of the Tivoli. Um, uh, okay. And it's been tough to retrofit the Tivoli, and you know for any number of reasons we said yes, we'd like to be part of the project, um, and again for faculty. Um, the staff housing, again, it's an AHEC project. We opted in. Um, we were not given the option of uh, providing student housing on the site. Um, and largely because it's too expensive. It's it's going to be, uh, you know, these rents are based on what's called area median income or AMI. And affordable housing is anything from like, you know, it's a lower percentage of that average median income. Um, in this case, it would be anywhere from 60 to 80 percent, um, meaning it's much more affordable. That's the housing that we want to go after. We want we want the affordable housing. We don't want the very expensive 120 percent of AMI, which is like market rate and is going to be incredibly expensive to live in some of these units. Um, so we we opted in to the to the project. Um, but I, I'll I'll make a pledge to you guys that if there's any conversation about using student fees, you guys will be the first to know, and it won't be a conversation that's being held um, without you and kind of being reported back. So it, it if and when that's even part of the conversation, I'll come back to you guys first. Okay, thank you. My last my last question is um, the Early Childhood Center. Is that a campus initiative? Is how how would that work? What if, do you have a, any information on like costs? If, or if you don't have information anywhere, you can direct me to find out. Yeah, I, I think there's some information on the AHEC site um, with. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know if these drawings and these schematics are on there or not. So but it might be worth taking a look. But let me awesome. say this. So the early learning center on campus on Colfax right now, are you familiar with that site? Yep. Okay. So this building will replace that early learning center. Okay. And, and it expands uh, the number of uh, children in the site, I think by about 30%. So it's bigger. And in terms of how it's being paid for, um, uh, Two million dollars has been received from the state. Um, the early, um, what's it called? The EDC Early Childhood Development Center, or you know, for the state's essentially the state office that deals with early learning. So they've already given a little bit over two million to the to that portion of the project. Um, AHEC has requested a one million dollar grant from Temple Buell, so that's pending. Okay. Um, and there was one other place they're looking, oh, a, a federal earmark. So our, our federal legislators have been requested to, to fund that project 
uh, for a couple million as well. So that is an uh, AHEC funded project, um, which will largely be paid for by grants and government funding. Um, because as you know, early childhood education really doesn't pay for itself. It's not a, that's not a profitable venture. Um, that'll help keep the doors open, but certainly will not pay for construction. So construction will largely be uh, paid for by uh, uh, government grants and, and um, philanthropic dollars. Okay, okay, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, I have my questions were answered. Awesome, thank you very much uh, for all this amazing information, James. We really appreciate it. Um, and so my questions um, are more are more so regarding like the pool area and, you know, if there's like any conversations going on about that area currently, what the plan is, you know, who's who's involved in that area and all that fun stuff. Yeah, good question. Thank you for that. So the, the we, we've had a couple proposals over the last few years. Um, there's the lowest end which projects a three million dollar uh project for refinishing the gym floor in that building so where where the basketball and volleyball takes place those floors need to be replaced very quickly um so it includes that uh as well as a covering of the pool and turning the pool into an event center so those two projects on the very lean side and the least expensive side, we think is is just north of $3 million. Um, there has been another proposal to open up the glass wall by the pool, uh, to extend the building a little bit, to reconfigure uh, and really make it an event center. And that has a $20 million price tag. Um, we don't think a $20 million price tag is feasible. Um, we think a, a $3 million price tag, as difficult as it's going to be to raise that money, uh, we think it's more doable. Um, so we think uh, we need to redo the gym floors and then uh, cover the pool and make an event space. Um, so it's, it's, one of, it's one of our university's important issues is our ability to hold events. And we had we've had more and more of them um, in in the last couple of years, uh, and we generally have to pay a heck for space. We we'd like to be able to have our own space, and and uh, you know the equivalent of a of a Tivoli turn hall size uh, event space or bigger um, that could be on that at, on that pool. So that's kind of the vision for that. Our, our next steps uh, are to, we, we've we've contracted with an architect to come up with what it might look like and to confirm the cost of the project. So that's our next step. And then uh, uh, we will um, proceed with some options of, of what we can do for, um, for, that, for our budget. And uh, we've got to raise the money. It, we we do not have the money yet to do the project, so we either have to um, to get grants, uh, go raise the money from from corporations and individuals, uh, or we have to figure out how to fit it into our budget somehow. But we don't. I I don't. Uh, I don't see. I don't see that uh, capital stack coming together in the next few months. It'll take us a while to get that project together. Awesome. Thank you. And then so. Because that space is, you know, in in the area of Campus Rec and stuff, um, ha, ha, have you talked with like with Campus Rec or like or, or the other like key key players in in this um talk? Yeah, in in, in this like this a uh, pool discussion. Yes, we've we've talked to Campus Rec. Um, we've talked to oh um. Who is it? Uh, do you know Luna? Let me see if I yes. Can what 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 is her department? What's her area? Is that just Campus Rec as well? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we so we've talked to Campus Rec. They they um, what, here here's the situation. 
what whatever we do on the pool area, it increases the amount of space for everyone who uses that building because it displaces some of the activity in other in other parts. Um, there's an academic portion that you that has some classes in that building. There's campus rec and there's athletics. All of them are bursting at the seams in that building. They all want more space. They all want more uh, usage of the space they currently have. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we think it's important to to start using the that pool area. A, because it's a big space. B, because you can take some of the classes that are being held and constrains our athletic teams, for example, from practicing uh, because it's being used by either academics with, with uh, some of their classes or campus rec. So everyone would have more space. Uh, we're not certain, you know, who would use it and that kind of thing because we don't have design yet. But um, the one thing we do know is that if we do the project, it will afford everyone who uh, uses the building more more space for their activities. Um, dance also wants more space, so that's kind of a factor in this. They have one very small space, and they require like padded floors and that kind of thing. So we're trying to take that into account and try to integrate that into the project. Um, we have racquetball courts and squash courts that are not being utilized right now, so we're trying to see how those can be repurposed and that kind of thing. So a lot of conversations, but you know, as you saw in the master sheet, it's it's pretty far down the line with regard to other the other uh, calendar projects. Um, and the, the major constraint there is just our ability to fund each of these uh, projects. Awesome, thank you very much. Yeah, so I'd, I... I'd call it preliminary conversations about the pool. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead. Oh. Good. Me? All right. So this sounds great and like intentions seem all right, but it just sounds like once again, we are letting AHEC advocate for their wants, their needs from their perspectives with their intentions rather than what 17,000 students who occupy this campus really want. You guys have failed to reach out to 17,000 students or at least the majority, let's call it 12 even at that, to see how they could benefit from something. And granted, we do bring a lot in a lot of money with paying the tuition that we do, but it's like we weren't even considered to be in the first realm or advocated for when it comes to like student housing is what it sounds like. And I love faculty housing. That's super important because this is a commuter school. And, you know, like our guest here said, he has to come like an hour and a half and he has, you know, it looks like a potential walking disability. Like, I think that's primarily important. So I'm glad that was brought up first because what's a university without its staff, right? But how can we prioritize a C2 hub versus student housing? I don't understand that. Can you please explain? They didn't. They didn't give them the option. It doesn't matter. Why weren't we advocating? We, the students don't have a lot of options. They don't get a lot of say. That's why we're here to advocate. So where was our university advocates when it comes to the student housing? Where was our advocates at? Instead, we get a whole new C2 hub building when we have a C2 hub building. We can make do with what we got, but what we can't make do with is students who can't come to campus, students who can't afford to come to the school because they don't have a place to live, students who are homeless right now, who are literally scrapping for whatever's on the ground, for whatever they can get, whatever Rowdy's Corner has, and if they have access to that on maybe Sundays because our campus is closed, or do they just get a star one day out of the week? That's not cool. Where was the advocates for student housing? Where were they? I want to know that. No, I want him to answer. Could, couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. I think I think the most important thing for the university is to create more affordable housing. The most important thing. So as far as I'm concerned from, from my department, none of these projects are as important as student housing. Um, having said that, uh, we don't own this campus. We don't own the land on the campus. We are one of three higher ed institutions that is a uh, client to uh, AHEC who has been given uh, legal and legislative authority to manage the property on campus. Um, and so the frustration that I hear in your voice, I have expressed pretty much all morning in meetings with AHEC because 
um, it is very tricky and very difficult to try to voice the concerns of MSU Denver in general, much less the students, when we don't have control of the asset. Um, it's hard. Build, building something on this campus is very, very hard. It'd be hard enough if we owned the property and just had to come up with the financing. It's not the way this goes. We have to uh, have any and all of our ideas approved through AHEC. So if I had $3 million today and wanted to redo the pool, I couldn't do it because it's not our building and it's not our property. So everything we do has to go through AHEC. Um, so if I if I had $60 million, which we're asking the state for, and, and the ability to build a health institute, I can't do that either. I have to negotiate with AHEC and get them to agree that what we build is in the best interests of the campus, taking into account two other higher ed institutions. And um, it's all it's all a negotiation and I've I've had a I've had a pretty I had a pretty rough morning because I had the same frustration that, that that I'm hearing from you right now. Uh and and that is AHEC wants to be the developer of campus and uh my interest is not AHEC, frankly. My interest is MSU Denver and the student experience. And so um I'm pushing as hard as I can. Um, I will tell you that our infrastructure team is much better than anyone else's on campus, uh, including AHEX. Uh, and uh, I believe our finance team is is the same. So in, in recent months, I, I would say over the last year, we, we built a really good team and we're pushing very hard. Um, student housing is, is the top of my list. Student housing is the top of the president's list. Um, but it's been a, uh, let's call it a very difficult negotiation with AHEC uh, for them to agree on what should be built where. So um, I hear you. I completely agree that student housing has got to be top priority, um, but also ask you to understand what my constraints are. And it's not, you know, it's not a great, it's not a great position to be in. Um, but uh, that's where we are. I mean, I understand, but, and I, and I pre I'm not by any means trying to put this on you. I am frustrated 1000%, but so then how are we as students supposed to advocate for our needs if they've made it very clear that we don't get a choice? I, I might have an answer for her on that, if I can. No, no, this is like to AHEC. I wanna know to AHEC, like from I, a professional standpoint, from a professional standpoint in your everyday work with AHEC, how come is it that we don't get a choice when we are one of the main sources of income on this campus on a daily basis, on a semester basis? How come they don't care? Is it just about profiting? Is it just about making money? Is that really what it comes down to? Uh, uh, I will definitely be the last person to speak on behalf of AHEC and what and how they see this um, as as what's important, what's not important. Um, I. I will say that my job is to work for you. My job is to serve the students of, of this university. Um, and uh, as we enter this conversation about student housing, I'll be as careful as I can to um, start the conversation with students and, and, and include students in the entire process. Um, uh and i think it's a fair you should have them come you should have them come present to to uh uh to msu student government and you should ask them the same question and 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 say you know it's interesting that you guys are doing these projects you know wh why wouldn't you be working with the universities to push things that are more important to students i think that's a very good question for them i i also think that it would be very important that we were just told that, that they need a lot of money from the state. And he just said, even if he got a lot of money from the state, it's not going towards anything students wanted. We cannot we do it. But we they want to put it towards an event center for a yes. no. well, for, uh, for profit, clearly. Yes, that's what they do. But what I'm trying to tell you is that 
we have no power over what they do, do. I mean, we can, and we can organize students, but at the end of the day, we can go ask the state, like, this is our money, these are our dollars, they're profiting from our, our tuition, and uh, they're like, they're just putting it in this laundry machine and then bringing it back and then profiting again with our tuition. So this is something that we need to bring to the state as students because this is also our taxpayer money. So that is like, they cannot do that. And like the government cannot give them money because that's our money. Like, right. So right. I think, I think the fight is not against James. I think well, it's never against James. Yeah, no, I, right. Yeah. Right. Okay, it so, is. so then what you're saying is that we need to organize students organize students to reach out to the government and basically be a, and encourage them to not pass this $60 million budget that AHEC is asking for because they are potentially using our money when they haven't even asked us for our two cents. What I'm saying is if James is willing to introduce us in the conversation or unless he was willing to introduce us in the conversation, then this would be something because they're going to have to go do this with the state. Like whenever the pro the legislative process is, is passing for this, we should be at the forefront, like telling uh, our representatives that this is not okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but we need to really be informed when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, who is going. Like, but yeah, that's right. Right now, I think that's our job. Here, so here, that's here's here's my here's my suggestion to you guys. So if I was if if I was in student government, I would want to hear directly from AHEC on their master plan. So the master plan site, I don't I don't know if they have communicated with you about that master plan. Um, there is a survey with regard to, to what and how uh, campus will look, but I would ask them to come present to you, to come present to this body and to talk about that master plan because the master plan gives the rules and process for how things will be developed on campus. That would be lovely. Would be yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and let me just add on to this real quick. This might solve your your problem. The issue is not the, the issue is we don't have representation on AHEC. That is the that is the issue. We don't have a voting member on that board who is a student who is that this is the fight I took up all last year and I got I I, <clears throat> I was a I was a champion for this and quite frankly I didn't get enough support from this new government in this fight. Now, this is something I don't mind bringing up again, but like I need commitment if like we're going to go through with this because this is going to take Sounds organization. It's going to take utilize, mobilizing all three schools. It's going to take quite frankly a lot of people in yeah. like in ABOD meetings, in state legislative meetings. This is a colossal undertaking to change state legislative, uh, state statutes. Yeah. And we have a governor in office who quite frankly doesn't care about higher education. Yeah. Like he's yeah. is not on top of his list. So like we could get the suicide legislator, he could still be toy. So it is a process that's gonna take a lot of undertaking. So you basically have to make him a point where he would look like a dick to the community. We have to we, it's a rallying of all schools. It's, it's a, a rallying of for all for every, like every single student to know that their voice matters and so it would mobilize it would be seventy thousand plus students. We're we're working on it. I promise you I'm working yeah. on it. And me and no, Rilla have been no, I know. I'm yeah. saying like we're we're trying to figure this out, and I I understand. I hear your frustration, um, but corporations are treated as a for like a, an individual, and yeah. that is a huge undertaking. Yeah. No, I get it. I just like mm -hmm. I thought they gave like at least some, I guess, two cents to the students, but yeah. clearly that's not the case. Uh, which is very disappointing, I guess. But the reality is exactly what you thought it was so are, are is is student government represented on a bod so the auraria board of directors there's no students on there a, get, i am <laughs> okay yeah thank you all um yeah so first i know like that two o'clock mark is coming up james so if you have to go like feel free to go you know we want to respect your time too um, and I can also provide more information regarding this as the ABOD rep and as a SACAP member, because this is what we do as try institutionally. Um, the meeting I invited you all last Wednesday to went over basically all of this information of the reimagining of Auraria. Um, thank you, Mike, for attending that. I appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah, that was like part of this of like, you know, what what is it that, that Auraria will, is planning to seem? Um, if you all want them to come to 
MC Denver Student Government specifically and give a presentation here, let me know and I can, you know, help set, set that up um, and get in contact with them and all that. I know the other, I know the other person who, who, who does the, like the development parts, um, part of the development things at a heck and stuff. So I, I can help coordinate something for that to happen here, like, you know, and all that fun stuff. Um, and let's see what else I was going to say. No, it's in my mind. Um, when it comes to like the student housing and everything that's going on, uh, the presentation so far that the, that the ABOD board overall has heard, um, wh when they come to present it, they come and, and present the building, you know, with the C2 hub and all that. And they also include like, like the student housing initiatives and, and like the faculty senate initiatives. And so that, that is always still talked about within those meetings. Um, and, how, and right, there's a lot of ways of like of the timelines and stuff and how all this will plan out. Um, and so currently they are still all in, you know, the first stages, the creation stages, the whatever you want to call it stages. Um, and they're always looking for more input, specifically Sasaki, which is like the, like the partnership that's helping create all of, of these like reimagined ideas and ways that the campus could look like and all that fun stuff. So if this is something that, that we want to do further on, like let me know so I can bring in the person and you know invite them to a meeting and Oh, you cut out, Gabe? Babe. You done? Can you all hear me? Yes. Now I can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which part did like, I stop at? Or did you stop hearing me at? Like five seconds? Five seconds. Just yeah. so, hmm? Okay. Right, cool. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. If, if you'll want them to come and all that, just like let me know as soon as possible so then we can set up so we can set something up um they can come give their presentation of, of what they're thinking about our area um and with that being said f from what i know the person the people who are helping reimagine all this are also part of, of like a third party thing so while they're working with AHEC, it's not necessarily just a heck pl planning this out and so if you want a representative specifically from AHEC to come talk to us about all this i can also help set that up just let me know, um, and I'll bring whoever whoever's willing to come. Okay. Yeah. Let, well, let, let me make one other offer to you guys, and that is on all things infrastructure. I have uh, a couple of internal meetings set up, and I'm happy to to have you in, you know, represented in uh, in those meetings. Um. So if that's something if that's something you're interested in and having like a I think we meet once a month maybe on on all infrastructure all the projects that we know about um, if you're in, interested in that we're happy to happy to have you there yes please if you can send that to the council and we'll try and see who can make it to which meetings yeah okay. Um, Thank you. I want to see it on the legislative level. Um, me and Will have been working, or at least attempting to work with the other two schools in the tri-institutional meetings. Um, I would love and encourage um, any other council members to join those meetings to push that even farther. Because um, we've, I did a presentation on how we could make this change, and they've referenced other issues they have other than the voting rights, but they haven't been transparent about what those concerns are. But. Yes, and this is, I think it's more council specific. Yes. Um, Naomi, a lot of the issues you referenced, I think a lot of it is we have not passed our goals yet. Mm -hmm. We have, we are all kind of in our, our own directions and we have not given it like a list of goals to kind of get in there. I think this should be on the list of goals. Yes. And I think like, too many members are not contributing to the working of these goals. Yeah. There's few members I can think of without my head who are like not as in, not in, involved in that, and that's a problem. So I think at some point this is a conversation we need to have on like what are our goals moving forward and how can we like get to those goals. I think we need like it's not even the goals. I think it's just we need actual James, action plans. James, to James, 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 James
Yes, so that, that's, just a, that's just an idea I wanted to put at the end of the conversation. There we go. And that's up to date, but I, so, this is like more constant. Yeah, that's more interesting. We, yeah, we should move on. Thank you so much for being here again. Yeah, yeah. And that was very, very insightful. Thank you. Yeah, my, my pleasure. And, and, and again, if anything comes up with regard to student fees, you guys will be the first to know. Um, and I'll uh, send information about uh, our meetings and make sure we get uh, student voice in there. Awesome. We appreciate, thank appreciate it. Thank you. You guys are up to date. Yeah, appreciate your time. And uh, thank you for serving on student government. This is a, a this is a big deal. It, it It's incredibly important what you guys are doing and kind of even even just hearing your perspective on on these things is very helpful for me. So um, so thank you, thank you for doing this. Thank, thank you. So thank you, James. Thank you. thank you. Have a good one. Moving on. Moving on. Um, I will. I will definitely uh, write my. No, no. You know what? I just have a quick one for faculty senate. Is that okay? Oh, if I yeah. go. Um, so I, from faculty senate, I don't have much, but I did go to the presidential cabinet. Um, I am just confused in one thing. Everything that we've been talked about by, like, yeah, I, I think we, we all know most of it was about this project, as well as like the seal of excellencia and other things I have mentioned in previous meetings. Um, what I was confused and that I'm going to look forward, I mean, uh, look into it, was that uh, when we got to uh, talk about workday. Uh, Jim Carpenter, the CEO, I mean, the, the person in charge of finance, says that the workday was working great and it was a great initiative and everything. We're mobilized into like a more sophisticated, um, as a more sophisticated university. I am just a little confused given the feedback that we have had from students. Um, so I am going to look into that. I will email Jim uh, Carpenter and see if he can meet with uh, me and if anyone else would like to join and then so we can bring uh, feedback to students ASAP on that. Uh, that related to the meeting that Naomi set up after this with? No, the, okay. no, this is something. Oh, yeah, I got a week later. Yes. Place, no, right? that is something else. Do you have a we got You're talking about work day, right? Yes. Specifically, Specifically about work day. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that that's all okay. I'm gonna talk about work day. Um, okay, beautiful. I'm I'm done. That was it. Okay. Um Paul's not here for the Dean of Councils. Um Deb for the Transitional. Yes, uh real quick. Uh, Matthew already mentioned it, but we floated the idea to the other schools about working, uh, about getting that, that vote, correct? The voting rights. Yeah, okay. the vote, our voting rights. Um, and then secondly, CCD brought up, uh, I think, an amazing idea yeah. that we can uh, pursue potentially. And the idea is putting more EBT machines on campus, which is feasible if we all work together and uh, collaborate. Do you want to work on that? Yeah. Okay. Wait, EBC what? Machines, like vending machines. With bootstamps. Yeah. Yeah. That yep. would be cool. Yeah. And so I uh, I encourage any counselors, again, like Matt you said earlier, to join those meetings if they have time and, you know, put forth great ideas to the other SGAs. Awesome. Dr. Barone. Oh, I'm so sorry, Matt. Oh, you're fine. Any. Um, the slides are updated, Dr. Brown. Yes. Um, the only advisor update, well, two things that I thought of. One is regarding surveys. I just want to remind everyone, um, as you all are thinking about developing surveys and doing that. Sorry, I'm with my kids at an appointment. <laughs> um, when you're doing that work, that you please um, connect with our um, Program Manager for Assessments um, and Data, Angelica Moreno, when you're developing the survey so we can make sure that we're in alignment with other surveys that are happening on campus. So that was just one reminder. And then the other thing, um, there was something else, but I don't remember what it is right now. Um, th that was the main thing that I thought of as you all were talking about a lot of the different data collection that you're doing. Um, and then as we already gave the update on the accountability committee stuff and uh, Alejandro talked about the budget. So I think we're good there. I don't have any other updates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Uh, 
What? Oh, we did public comment. That was yeah. most of our conversation, Dr. Baker. Yes. Um, I just remembered one more thing. I'm so right. sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, just as a reminder that Will, um, Dr. Simpkins and Taylor are having the meeting um, after your meeting, I believe, uh, to discuss the funding um, and the long-term sustainability plan for the food pantry. So I just wanted to make sure to remind you all, for those of you who are in person, to please um, join them for that. And I'm sorry, I can't be there. I actually took today off, but I wanted to make sure I at least attended your meeting. So. Um, thank you, and please keep me updated after after the meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Will do. Okay. Um, yeah, I was gonna uh, ask because I think the two bills on here are Denny's. One is mine. I can present one of them. Please. All right. The uh, community hour is next. Okay. Uh, I will go for community hour real what? quick. Uh, can you pull it up? Can I didn't print things because they have the problems. truth. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, so as presented by Dr. Baker, what's his name? Yes. Um, we did not get a lot of feedback from students and we did not get a lot of uh, feedback from faculty. Um, the university, this specific university is concerned with things that other universities are not. If DU has a budget crisis, they can just enroll 10 more students and the $60,000 just give us, gives them a surplus of budget. We do not have that luxury here. Uh, so we depend a lot on uh, credit hours. And uh, my survey, more than asking about how do you feel about the community hour also has like, would this affect uh, your availability to take classes because I know that like pushing 45 minutes for me would suck because I have to work. So I wonder how other students feel about that. I also my survey also includes um, if you you think you would need more academic support or more recreation activities. Um, and if perhaps is there another time that you think would work better? Uh, so my focus is very much, it's very, I mean, yeah, my focus is very much, you know, on hearing how it would affect everyday life. So then it's, it's a student's availability to take classes. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna go to the, this is what all the where so I'm gonna go therefore by it result. Um, PSAC representatives will distribute the following survey through tabling, asking fellow classmates and posting flyers around campus. Um, I, it, Please, uh, the I hope you guys had a chance to read this. I posted in the chat last week and the survey was up. Um, uh, let's not look at the survey because we don't have enough time. So I'll just go through that. Okay. Um, and I am willing to, to change the survey before we even brought it out. Like, so please, please look at it and I will let you know before I send anything. Um, for, each, for outreach to be optimized, TSA will reach out to the Faculty Senate for assistance in the distribution of the survey. If members of the Faculty Senate agree to assist uh, in the effort to gather feedback for community hour, each council member responsible for reaching out uh, and sending a QR code to provide students with access to the survey to their specific department chairs to be distributed amongst faculty members. The remaining departments will be equally split as possible amongst all, amongst all council members. As a Director of Student Affairs, uh, will Dr. William Simpkins partakes in TSAC meetings once a month, every month. The results of the survey will be shared with him on the upcoming November meeting. I would like to make a friendly amendment to, to perhaps this will be done in the January meeting, just so we have a little more time. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, you can as often. Yeah. Okay, so let's just change that real quick. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. Uh, okay, that's it. Do you want to start timing for seven minutes? Um, so I wanted to throw out um, a few different things. Um, this also relates to the tabling bill and the survey I sent out because this is kind of stuff we want at our tabling events um, on top of the flyering and all that. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a whole list of all the faculty and staff, including the department heads, with emails, phone numbers, and everything. Um, so we can split it up that way so it's nice and easy okay. for departments we're not a part of. I think we should talk about logistics later. If yeah, I'm just throwing that out as a little piece. Okay. okay. Um, Naomi. So I think this is amazing. Like I said, I have plenty of connections that can get us at least throughout the state department um, and possibly the history department as well. But um, 
I think that so the is this already on here? I didn't get a chance to read that. Well, yes. Okay, no, I'm not I'm not saying like anything. You go ahead and do but I was just gonna say, like, would it be okay if like you could throw an amendment in there? Like of course, yeah. You can change yeah. anything or add to if you see fit, would that be okay? Like maybe there's somewhere in there, right? Like he or um he's that can <laughs> Add in or edit any questions on the survey as needed over. I would agree with that. I think all of us would have to agree with what goes into the survey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, he, can we add that? So just adding a like the survey can be modified at any point prior I, to this meeting as long as all three set members agree before it's sent out. Well, or all the information of the budget or oh, yeah. the the VR committee gives a thumbs up, and that's the, yeah, that. the VR committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not all thumbs. So okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. So I think a lot, where a lot of surveys fall short in this university is that they don't like give something. Why don't we just look? Like, hey, you fill out the survey. We give out another pair of headphones or something. Oh. Like, hey, we put a nice shiny headset on there. That's two hundred dollars or something. Right. And like, hey, or you fill out this or food. or food. Yes, but um, they do a lot of food gift cards. Like, let's make it substantive. Also, it's kind of hard. We can't pay for your money. Oh, why don't we do like a, one of those spa days? I want to be, they cost the same things. That's like one spa day where you get like a whole treatment. That's just like a hundred dollars. That's the same as the beach. Oh, that's there. nice. I like that. Yeah, okay. We can go on like Groupon or something to yeah. try and. So, like, let's, let, let's, I buy for the amendment is like we give away something, add something in there, but like PR can anymore. Well, it'll you come out of. Can't. Okay. Yes. Um, the PR committee, it'll come out of their budgets. So, we'll, uh, Determine a raffle of sorts. What is it that sorts for? A raffle um, gift. Get a cap. Give it a cap. A cap. Oh, um, not exceeding. Yeah, two hundred dollars. That's yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Well, it's the PR committee's but they, they don't have a cap on any of their budget. Yeah, I know, but I want this to have. Okay, that's fine. How much money? So not exceeding two hundred dollars for a participant of the survey. For, okay. To increase the survey's engagement. Sir. Engagement, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Really not. Okay. Sounds good. I'm okay with it. All right. Motion to vote. I second, second. that. Right. Beautiful. Okay. I love collaboration. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? Let's say you pass unanimously. There we go. All right. I got to go to that financial aid meeting. I will oh, do we have voting call still? Of course not. Quorum. We can do. we vote? Can we vote? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can still vote. Sure. Okay. I have a bill. So is it your bill or? It's my bill. Micro collaborated with me. Oh, I did collaborate. You did collaborate. With I do. Me. Actually, one thing I think we messed up on the last one is I don't think you're allowed to read it. I'm allowed oh. to read it. I'm not allowed to direct the conversation. You're directing the conversation. Okay. So yeah. I just want a clarification. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Is anybody else going to make it to the financial aid studies meeting for the one that's at 2 30? I'm going to the three o'clock financial. I'm going to Brown, but not owners. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna motion to extend the minute by five minutes. Five minutes. Extend the meeting by five minutes. Yeah. So I second. Oh wait, second. no, it's seventeen. Wait, so are we? Yes. Gabe. Um, just in case, if we do extend extend it, I do have to leave at two thirty. Um, and, and we won't have quorum. Just like as a heads up. Okay, no, then we can try, and if we don't get, and if you don't get to vote, then I'll just, we'll I'll just table it. Yeah, I'll just table it. It's okay. Right? Yes, it's yeah. fine. Oh wait for it. Okay, so let's start. 
Um, it has been brought to the attention of the student government and student advocacy council, the lack of student storage and space opportunities provided in the Tivoli Student Union. To combat this issue, the student advocacy council is uh, to implement a temporary solution to address, address the student needs. Historically, multiple student organization spaces have been located about the Tivoli Student Union. Several requests have been made to utilize the student government office as storage space and hold events and gatherings. Special, uh, several grievances have been violated by this, uh, but have been voiced, sorry, by students and student organizations about lack of equity and representation among the state tech body. We at the student government, the advocacy council, have to come to an agreement to temporarily store student organizational materials and to hold occasional gatherings in student government offices, general community areas to support student organizations in an equitable manner. The following steps will be taken. Uh, to house student organization materials in the student government office. Please note the individual offices uh, housed within Tivoli 307 are not open for hosting or storing materials. This bill only references the common areas. Storing all materials. In order to store the materials in the student government office in the designated shelf area, the student organization must complete the following steps. Uh, here are the steps. You notify a student government uh, counselor and you complete the link to the liability waiver. Uh, and then you have to email Kenny and the sponsoring council and our advisor as well. One of these steps have been, uh, all of these steps have been approved. The student organization will be assigned a space for them to store their materials. If you've seen it, we have, now we have four shelves and they each have four spaces. So we have quite a bit of space uh, for that. Uh, the housing events. In order to hold an event in the student government office, the student organization must take the following steps. Uh, again, it only references the common areas, not the individual offices. Uh, notify the student government of potential to abuse of potential use of space. Um, make sure that a council member will be present during the event. Complete, complete the reservation form and liability. Uh, once they have been filled out and turned in, then you will you email to Kenny, the sponsoring council and uh, our advisor. So therefore, hereby further results, in order to serve all students with equality and student organization, oh, all student organizations must be stored in the best security areas, regardless of a council or affiliation with a student organization. The student organization materials must not be stored in individual office spaces. The student storage and avail availability to hold events will be given out on a first come first serve basis and will be distributed equitably regardless of a counselor affili affiliation with a student organization. Events and storage practices must abide by MSU student code of conduct. The Student Advocacy Council withholds the right to remove with notice any student organization materials or end gatherings that break the rules set for by this resolution. The removal of materials and ending of gatherings are up to the discretion of the sponsoring, sponsoring council. Student organizations must be notified by email about the removal of materials from shelf areas with anticipation to allow organizations to gather their belongings. If after three attempts of contact in a span of three weeks, the organization has not responded, the sponsoring counselor is responsible for the removal of organization materials. That's all. Okay, open it for discussion. Okay, awesome. Um, I love this bill. I'll be voting for it. Um, I do want to state that uh, this is a great uh, step forward in the right direction for uh, space for student organizations and uh, remind counselors here that are present and not present that we should continue that advocacy for an expansion of that space. Correct. Okay. So it's changed. Because of the individual offices, things aren't coming out of individual offices and used. What do you mean? On shelving. What do you mean? Things that were in individual offices. Yes. Is this news? No, 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 yeah. no. Okay. So so we're trying to we're trying to move things out of individual offices that um yes, we're trying to move things out of individual offices to the common areas because I think why would it be a better representation of student organizations that for all of them to have the same space in our office. So. But that's not in here. Yes. It no, it is. What do you mean? I thought you 
it says um did not include individual offices no it does it does it, it does. says things are in individual offices will be moved to the common area or be removed the part that doesn't include it was the hosting events and stuff right up to sure so yeah. like they can necessarily hold meetings and events in our individual offices Right. But the material should be in the common space. So, so it, it, on top, it's like, please note individual offices housed within Tivoli 307 are not open for hosting or storing materials. Okay. So, yeah, none of I that. I missed that little word. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Storing the materials. Okay. So, yeah, no storing materials. Um, okay. Clear. Thank you for clarifying that. <clears throat> right. Do you Do you want me to make, like, we can, if you feel like it needs to be more clear. I am welcome to a friendly amendment. I just, I just didn't want to have any, any confusion about this point. That's all. Okay. And then um, I'll add on. My next year, well, my conclusion. Um, I'll add on to this. Um, uh, the budget committee is going to work on like revamping the conference room as well because the conference room is kind of dilapidated and decrepit. We're, we're going to try, try to get some new equipment in there, a uh, new TV setup for student orgs to use that space as like a meeting space because I know I don't think like it's usable at the moment. Uh, I think we could get IT or something just tear us up out and we'll buy some new stuff to put in place for the future. Hey, book the conference room, it's all yours. You can record meetings in there, do what you need. So okay. I, I have one more thing. In the in the very last part, we mm -hmm. I did put all student organization materials must all student organization materials must be stored in designated areas regardless of a counselor affiliation with the student organization. Okay. That part is there. Okay. Yes, I mean, sorry. I just want to post this question for clarification. Um, when we say materials, do we mean everything affiliated to a student org? Yes. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I thought about this question because Alejandro was wears his, uh, his jackets, like his org jackets, and I was like, well, am I gonna kick like Alejandro off the office if he's wearing his jacket on? <laughs> Um, but I think it's things that make uh, like the organization, like materials that make the organizations like function. Like uh, I cannot kick you out of the office for something you're wearing. Like that's just. Right. Uh, but I, I don't. Go ahead. I lost my friend. So you're good. Um, this is mandated to student organizations and their materials. So like Alejandro's line jacket is not like part of that. That's like I wouldn't. That's not student. That's a personal item, yes. Yeah. So, like, say someone's work. Uh, yeah, this is more like materials that student orgs use on campus for any sort of event. That just goes to the shelf, the shelf per se. Yeah, so the banners, banners, posters, so personal items that. Of the that like are from you. No, like, they they yeah. stay. I think it's basically like if my org was supposed to have, or is going to have a, an event, I can set up like my tablecloth and I'll show like stuff yeah. that's. Because the organization, mm -hmm. but like with my line jacket, I don't necessarily would find a reason to leave my line jacket on the shelf. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's more of like things that orgs can use to either hand out or something that will like help their event overall. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Any friendly amendments? So, yes. So in the offices, you all can put whatever you want to put in the offices, but in the common area, it has to be for student government stuff. No, it's right. Mm -hmm. It's backwards there. Like our offices are for student government stuff and not for student orgs. Anything student org related has to be on your shelves. It, this is about the shelves that are in that corner. Oh, okay. So the offices have. I mean, but it's like students. If a student comes into my office and uses a computer, I mean, they're welcome to do that. Like uh, that's like that's still a no. Like we're not uh, taking that out of the table because. The materials are there for students, uh, but yeah, they want to use a computer where I I usually sit. They're they're welcome to do that. Um, yeah, but we're yeah we're not we're making it more difficult for students to get there. What? Oh, the constitution does say that like it has to like the desk has to be unoccupied. It has to be unoccupied. unoccupied if uh, someone wants to come and use it. Yeah, so per, I think that's, yeah. been, oh, that's been the case anyway. Like, if your student wanted to use the computer, that part I already saw happening. Yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. 
I mean, but it's like, yeah. What if, what if the student is a counselor? That's my what do you concern. mean? If that student wants to occupy that desk, if they're a counselor. I mean, he can't occupy, he can't occupy the desk. Yeah, okay. They can occupy the desk. Like, what, what do you mean? I don't know what like you're saying. Student org materials in the desk. Like oh no, that's not a thing. If it's a student or material, it's not in the desk. And it references in the bill that even if, even with the any relation a counselor has with a student or, um, that it still has to be on the shelving. Let's put it this way: when a student comes and sits in your office, oh, okay, but just yeah, okay, but just just real quick. Uh, if a student wants to come and sit in your office, they should feel welcome. They should feel welcome, and they should be no, like they should know that like you're advocating for every single student, not just a very like I mean, not just a certain population. Okay. That's okay. Um, can I say this too? I think sometimes we forget that we're all students still, even though we're council members, we're also still students. I think sometimes we forget that. Do we? Do you want us to? You don't want to vote today? Yes. Oh no no we can. Yeah, I motion that. The uh, discussion is ended. I motion to vote on this bill. I second it. Right. So we'll do voting individually. Gabe has to vote. Um, so we'll start with Gabe. Aye. Alejandro? Aye. Mike? Yes. Denny? Aye. Will? Aye. John? Yes. Creek? Aye. And I vote aye as well. So it, it is passed. Beautiful. Going with that, I vote to adjourn the meeting. I second that. Yeah, I'll second that. Have a great weekend. I'll see a bunch of you at subsequent meetings. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Go down and join one of the